Hey guys, this is part three of how to read obfuscated code. So popping back up, again, I want to focus on the creeper class. So we went through, we deobfuscated a lot of stuff. Um, now I'm going through and I'm searching for usages again on the creeper. So we see the living map manager, which we just, uh, which we just stepped through in part two. Now we're going to move on and let's take a look at what this is. We see a lot of different monsters, spider, zombie, skeletons. So this looks pretty juicy too. Hello, and then we see a bunch of other really useful strings up here. So we do a quick scan down to see if there's anything else, and that's it. OK. So this class has a bunch of names of biomes in it, and it has a couple of arrays of um, specific monsters in it. So. Um, I'm going to guess that this class is related to um, showing uh, which, uh, it's related to which monsters appear in which biomes, um, because very clearly it's a class that holds those two uh, bits of information. And as we know from playing the game, at nighttime, um, all of those uh, creatures in the enemy mob come out. Um, in the daytime or the nighttime, those friendly mobs come out, and the squid only appears in water. So it's a pretty safe bet. Now I'm looking for usages of the enemy mob array, since we're interested in learning more information about uh, the enemy NPCs. That's kind of what I want to focus on in this example. Okay, so if something something return enemy else return uh, the friendly mob else return the friendly water mob it references hz.a which I don't see in here which is probably a, um, a decompilation error so I could I could rot hole down and figure out and try to determine what dot a dot b and dot c are but it really doesn't matter what does matter is we know that this method is the only way that that enemy mob array gets returned. So hz.a most likely means if it's nighttime and some other conditions are right. And same with hc.b and c. So we don't, we don't need to go and go into that right now. Just like we did with the mob classes, I can go ahead and rename these since I know that they're biomes. And these are all biome instances. So um, this is a great place where we know what these names are. I can rename these appropriately, like rainforest biome, swampland biome, and so forth. And then find usages, and that will give me additional information into what other related classes are and what they're doing. So if I was interested in finding out how often certain biomes showed up, or if I wanted to make a mod that guaranteed uh, like the snow biome would be created in my file or something, I, I could spend a lot more time right here. So here, for example, I see next int, which I know is used from the random class, and rainforest biome. So this, this class right here most likely is related to generating random biomes. It has random in it. It references all those biome classes we were just looking at. I see lots of, yeah, I see lots of usages um, from the random class, next int, next double, next float, and so forth. So very quickly, we're looking for uh, just easy pickings. I'm going to call this random biome generator. This is an interface. OK, nothing in here gives me any additional info, so I'm just going to call it iRandom biome generator. Rename this variable. If you're familiar with Java, you know that a classical way to name interfaces is to append them with an I. Modern day usage, um, it's not used so much, but for our purposes, it's, it's fine for now. 
pop back up to the creeper. Let's do another search for usages and see what we uh, see what we know now. So the top listing is those uh, uh, those uh, OpenGL usages. So we're going to skip past those. Living Map Manager, Mob Render Map. Okay, so this is the only class that uses the creeper that still doesn't have a name. So OC class only gets used here. So this class is just used to store an, an, an instance, um, probably a singleton instance of all those mobs. This is very clearly, you can see that the constructor is private and this is a public static variable, so this is very clearly a singleton for this class. We can double check real fast by looking for instances. See if there is a get instance method. No, he just uses the singleton directly. Ah, that's bad programming. You should have a get instance method and make that a private static variable. Oh well, not a big deal. Okay, back to Creeper. Living Mapper, Living Map Manager, and Biome. So I'm going to guess that to figure out more information about how NPCs appear and disappear, it's going to be related to this Biome class. So I pop back into here, and now I'm going to trace down in this enemy mob array, and I'm, this is where I'm going to dedicate my time so I can learn more about how NPCs spawn. I can see that the enemy mob array is referenced only twice, so that's going to make it really nice and easy to to get to, to drill down into this. Here's that get mob array method that we renamed a little while ago. So let's do a find usages on it. Okay. We see it gets used here and gets a reference to it. So this this array is either going to be um, the enemy array, the friendly array, or the the uh, water mob array. So I'm just going to look down. Here we see that that mob array only gets reference right here. So let's give this a better name. So living equals mob array get constructor new instance. Okay, this is the only place where one of those mobs gets created. So here I'm just taking a look at this. It takes three doubles. I'm pretty sure that this is an, a, a location, an XYZ location. So I'm going to name this XYZ because it creates it and then it calls this method on it. I'm not sure what those floats do yet. And while we're in living base, I'm going to go ahead and rename these variables xloc. Hmm. xloc, xloc2, xloc3. Okay, so these are probably some sort of positioning coordinate variables. I don't care too much about positioning right now, so I'm not I'm not going to drill down and figure out what the differences are. I'm just going to name them one, two, and three right now because I don't really care. But this definitely looks like it's some sort of set position function. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope I hope you learned something. Um, I just kind of tried going through and talking out loud as I as I went through and picked apart this code. Uh, 
uh, now um, I have a good amount of information I'm pretty sure that the code above this piece of code has to do with when and how uh, enemy mobs uh, come into existence. So I'm going to spend the afternoon studying this particular piece of code. Um, but most importantly, um, with very little work, I was able to figure out um, a lot of the different pieces of the puzzle and able to kind of narrow in on the piece that I was really interested in. And now I can just focus on this part uh, to extract the specific information that I'm interested in. So. Um, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and um, I'll talk to you next time.